Hey everyone, um, today's video is going to be about the excerpts from Romeo and Juliet assignment. Um, it has the prologue as well as a scene from later in the play. Um, before we start reading, I'm going to point out this um, bit of the instructions to you, because this is what we're going to look at. It says, as you read, take notes on how the figurative language used throughout the passage contributes to the themes. So we're going to use that as our focus as we read through it. Um, I'm not going to read the prologue because we did talk about it in class before we went out for the virus. Um, and the bigger part of the theme comes from this excerpt from Act 2, Scene 2. So again, I'm not going to read the whole thing out loud to you because it's too long, um, but we are going to talk about certain parts of this scene. So we're going to annotate as we go, and hopefully this will help as you do your own assignment. So the first thing I want to point out is this little part where it says wherefore. We need to use the footnotes. Please use the footnotes, guys. Wherefore means why. So when you read this, read it like, oh, Romeo, Romeo, why art thou Romeo? So remember, thou equals you. Thou equals you. Got it. There we go. Thou is like the Elizabethan English way of saying you. So Romeo, Romeo, why are you Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. So refuse thy name. Oh, I keep trying to ask questions like you guys are going to be able to answer them. Refuse thy name. The whole reason Romeo and Juliet can't be together is because of their families, right? The Montagues and Capulets hate each other. So their names are the whole reason they can't be together in the first place. So we're going to note that part because that's important. It's important because that's what's preventing, that's what's creating the conflict of the plot is that their names cause them not to be able to be together. So deny thy father. Who do you get your last name from or your family name? It comes from your father, right? Typically speaking, if you have both your parents, it comes from your father. So Juliet is saying, deny your father. So deny who your parents are and refuse your name. Stop being a Montague. Or if thou wilt not, or if you will not, be but sworn my love. So sworn means to promise. So promise to be my love. Promise to love me. And I'll no longer be a Capulet. So we're going to highlight this part too, because what Juliet is saying here is, if you're not going to refuse to be a Montague, then tell me, and I'll refuse to be a Capulet. So she wants Romeo to stop being a Montague, or if he won't, she'll stop being a Capulet if he promises he loves her. So already, so far, in the first four lines, we've seen that names are very important in this section. Who you are is an important question in this scene. So that might give us a hint as to the theme. So Romeo says, oh, shall I keep listening or shall I speak at this? That's what that line means. He's saying, he's saying it, like whispering it to himself. Juliet goes on. She's like talking to herself. She says, "'Tis but thy name that is my enemy." So thy, meaning your, Romeo's name that is her enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. So let's start here with this line. Thy name that is my enemy. So if Juliet is saying that Romeo's name is her enemy, it sounds like she's starting to differentiate between Romeo as a person and Romeo's name. So she's like trying to reason with herself. Romeo's name 
by the way, when it's referring to name, usually it's meaning um, your last name. When in this play it's talking about your name, it means your family name, so your last name. Romeo's family name is her enemy, not Romeo himself. So she's saying, I can be with Romeo, I just can't be with a Montague. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's a Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. So when she's saying all of this right here, it is nor hand, nor foot, etc., etc., she's saying your name doesn't have anything to do with your actual physical being. So you, Romeo, are still Romeo even if you weren't a Montague. Montague doesn't have anything to do with your actual existence. Then we get to this line in line 25, which is very important. Um, and it's quoted often. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called. We're going to highlight all of this chunk together and we're going to talk about it because this part is... Um, a little bit more complicated. So we've already talked about how Juliet is trying to differentiate Romeo from his name and how she is saying that she's not enemies with Romeo, she's just enemies with the name of Montague. So she's saying, what's in a name? What's important about a name? That which we call a rose, meaning the flower, a rose, by any other name would smell as sweet. So she's saying, if we called a rose something else, like a I don't know, a glump, it would still smell the same. So if a rose was called anything else, it would smell, it would smell the same. Um, so Romeo would, were he not Romeo called? So this is making a comparison between Romeo and the Rose. So based on what we've heard so far, Juliet is trying to say how Romeo is not the same as his last name, a Montague. Romeo himself and the name don't go together. And now she's saying, well, a rose would still smell good even if it wasn't called a rose. The name Rose doesn't have anything to do with the flower itself. Think about what kind of comparison Juliet might be drawing here. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called. When it says so right there, it's meaning like in the same way or just like that, Romeo would if he were not Romeo called. So if Romeo was called something besides Romeo, if he had a different name, if he had a different family name, he would still be the same person. So Juliet argues that Romeo's name, meaning the Montagues mainly, doesn't have anything to do with who Romeo actually is. So she's continuing on the idea of how important somebody's name actually is. She's asking herself and trying to answer for herself whether or not a name defines who somebody is. So she says, Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. We're going to look and see what the word doff means real quick. It means to remove or to be rid of. So Romeo, get rid of your name, and for that name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. Remember, thee is like you. Thee and thou are usually you, refer to you. Thy is your. So for that name that you're getting rid of, which is no part of yourself, take all of myself. So get rid of your name, which doesn't have anything to do with who you are anyways. And take all of me because I love you so much. And Romeo says, I take thee at thy word. So he's like, I believe you. Call me but love and I'll be new baptized. I'm just going to annotate this line right here because it gets the main idea of this little section. Um, call me but love. So say that I'm your love. 
and I'll be new baptized. In those times, baptism was how you got your name. So Romeo is saying, promise that you love me and I'll become somebody else. I'll get a different name. Romeo says that as long as Juliet loves him, he'll stop being called Romeo for her. But as we've already established, Juliet seems sure that the name doesn't really mean anything. He could be anybody else. He could be called anything else and he would still be, um, he would still be Romeo that she loves. Now this part kind of amuses me a little bit because Romeo up to this point has just been kind of like creeping in her backyard. She doesn't know he's there. And so he says that henceforth I never will be Romeo. And she's like, what man art thou? She's been surprised on her secret thoughts that she's been saying out loud by Romeo hiding in her backyard, hidden or shrouded in darkness is what it means by thus bescreened in night. So he's kind of like hidden in the dark shadows, been listening to what she's saying to herself. Um, but so we're going to get back to the theme of name. I got to hurry up. Um, Romeo says that he doesn't know how to tell her who he is because her na his name is hateful to himself because it is an enemy to thee. So my name, dear saint, is hateful to myself because it is an enemy to thee. So Romeo doesn't like being a Montague anymore. Romeo doesn't want to be a Montague anymore because Juliet hates Montagues. Because, we're just going to write the short version of because, Juliet hates Montagues. So again, they've both kind of established that it doesn't matter what you're actually called, you're still yourself. So Romeo is saying, well, I can't tell you who I am because my name is terrible and we have to get rid of my name. Juliet asks him, art thou not Romeo and a Montague? So she's not, she's saying, isn't that Romeo that I'm hearing? Romeo, is it you? And you're a Montague. Romeo says, neither, fair maid, if either thee dislike. So she, he's saying, I'll stop being Romeo and I'll stop being a Montague if you don't like either of those things. And then we're not going to spend much time on these last few lines. I'll just kind of summarize it for you. Basically, Juliet's asking, how did you even get here? The walls to our orchard, that's like their backyard, are high and they're hard to climb. And the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. So for all they've talked about, it doesn't really matter that Romeo is a Montague because a name doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't change who you are as a person. It kind of does matter because kinsmen, which means family members or relatives, if Juliet's Capulet kinsmen, family members, find Romeo there, they will probably murder him. Romeo says, basically, that his love for Juliet is so strong and powerful that nothing that her family members could do to him will stop him from loving her or being there. So, in summary, we're looking at the theme of this text. And so far, it seems that it's mostly about whether or not Romeo's name defines who he is. So that's the question Juliet's asking herself. That's the main idea of this scene. Does it matter? And Juliet seems to arrive at the conclusion that it doesn't. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog barking. She likes to study Romeo and Juliet too, apparently. Um, so hopefully this will help you as you go on and answer your own analysis questions when you do this assignment. Um, this is one of my favorite plays, so I wish we were able to study it more completely and more in depth and in person. Um, but that's all I got for now, so I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.